we are going to not only show you some tips on embroidery on a towel, but this is one of our own designs. Um, so my buddy Cheryl is starting to design embroidery patterns for us. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to embroider on a really basic tea towel. I chose the tea towel because it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to do a lot of extra things to make this work. And so if you're new to embroidery or you haven't tried doing tea towels yet, I just wanted to give you some tips for things like getting it straight in the hoop and um, and stabilizers and whatnot. Okay, so this is this is one of the designs. Well, this is the design, but this is one of the colors of the kits you can do. This is called Heat and Stay. It is a fusible tear away stabilizer. Um, I like to stable. I like to fuse just about everything because. It's if you fuse your stabilizer to your fabric, you have less puckering around the edge of your stitches. Do you see how even though there's a lot of stitches in our little gingerbread man, he lays nice and flat. That is not only because of the stabilizer, but because I fused it on before I started the embroidery. Now, I don't really like to hoop my towels because you get what we call hoop burn around the edge. So the reason I use heat and stay is Yes, it's fusible. Yes, it's a tear away, so it's pretty easy to use, but I can actually hoop my stabilizer first before I put my towel in the hoop. Towels can be problematic sometimes because they're a little bit thicker and uh, you get the, you can see the edge of the hoop around it. So I'm going to just hoop my stabilizer. I want my top hoop to be nice and flush with my bottom hoop. If you're not getting it hooped really straight and tight, unhoop it. Okay. So what I will do is I'll put my stabilizer in my hoop. I'll tighten it down to where I want it to be. And then I unhoop it, which seems kind of counterproductive. But what that does is it gives me a shape of where my stabilizer is going to be. And now that my hoop is tightened to where it needs to be, my stabilizer isn't going to shift and move. It's just going to pop really nicely into the hoop. How do we get this in there square? My favorite way to figure out where my middle is, and on a towel, you don't really want to put it right in the middle. I mean, maybe you do, but for this design, we're not going to put it right in the middle. I'm going to take my towel, fold it right sides together, and I'm going to press a little crease in it. Now, depending on how far up your towel you want to go, if you want your design to stitch right down here at the bottom, then just fold your towel up a little bit like maybe two inches. You just wanna give yourself a reference point for where things are straight. This towel here, you can see that I folded it up a little bit higher. I folded it more like six inches to find my middle. So we're gonna take and make our design a little bit lower down on the towel. So I'm gonna fold this up again about three inches. You can decide where you want this to be. Our design is only about uh, four by five. So you need to make sure that it, it's high up enough that you're gonna you're not gonna have it too low in the hoop. Now my hoops have reference points, top and bottom, right and left. So if I've decided that this right here is my middle, okay? So I'm gonna line the fold up down the middle of my line. This one though, I want to line up with my side points, okay? So my fold is lined up top to bottom. My side points are lined up right to left, okay? So if you're not entirely sure where you want that to be, I just kind of hold the middle and then I run my finger over down the crease and there's my reference point on that side, I run my finger down the crease and make sure that the little notches that are in the sides of my hoop is where my finger is landing. Okay, so if I run it up the top and then flip my, my towel back, it's right there in that middle, okay? Now, our towel is just kind of floating in our hoop right now. I really like this little steam fast iron because it'll fit right inside my hoop. My big iron won't fit inside my hoop which means if I want to put a fusible stabilizer on the back of my towel with my big iron, I need to fuse it before I hoop it. And then I can't hoop my towel. I mean, I, I hoop my towel, but I might get rope burn or hoop burn. Oh, I'm tired. 
I might get hoop burn in it. The other thing I can't do if I put my stabilizer on before I hoop my towel is I can't stitch this far down on my towel. I mean, I could, but I'd have to move the design. I can just float my towel where I want it in the hoop now. Wherever I fuse it down, that's where she's going to stitch. Okay, so now my design is going to be centered right about here. It's going to stitch down about that far. Okay, so now we're going to take our towel and we're going to kind of fold it up so that it's all manageable to take to our machine. I'm going to fold these sides in. This side matters more than the rest of them because I need to be able to slide it onto the hoop over here on this side. So now my towel is, my hoop is loaded into my embroidery arm. I'm gonna fold my towel out, out of the way. This design's gonna stitch right here. So it's, I'm not worried about my towel getting caught up under anything. I'm gonna load my design. So to load my design, I just open my thumb drive here, which is this one here. Here's my cookie and I'm gonna hit set. And then I'm gonna hit embroidery. Now, my first color that I'm gonna stitch the holiday word, I'm gonna do this uh, like a Christmassy green and we're gonna stitch this word out and then we're gonna talk about, about some tricks in changing your thread. So to thread our machine, I've got my green thread in here. With Brother Machines, it's really easy to thread because you literally just follow the numbers. So you have one, two, three, four, five. If your foot is down, watch what happens. If I put my foot down, see that little thing pops over? That stops you from trying to thread your foot while your foot's down because you can't thread your foot while your foot's down because your, th your um, tension discs are closed. So the machine has a way to stop you from doing something foolish. Now I have threaded all the way down to number five. At this point, I do drop my foot because my thread is through my tension discs and it, it kind of clamps on it. And then look, my thread doesn't come through, which makes this step easier. When I put it through this thread guide, bring it up over here and cut my thread. When I push my needle threader button, it, it threads the first time every time. I absolutely love that about this machine. So we've stitched out our holiday word. We're going to switch to our next color, which is this gold part that's gonna stitch out the word calories. Here's my hot tip for when you're changing your thread. You never want to grab your thread spool and pull it out backward through your machine. That can cause a number of problems. One, we talked about the tension discs. You don't want to pull thread backward through your tension disc. Uh, it's like petting a cat the wrong way. They just don't like it. Um, so instead, what I did was I cut my green thread. I'm going to grab my thread at the needle and just pull it through like floss. Then we can thread our next color. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out my thread colors and stitch out the rest of my design. Um, and I'll just come in and check with you periodically and show you where the progression should go. On your thread list, the colors are a little bit, the colors that came up in my machine are not necessarily the colors that um, we chose to put in the design. So you, um, you might want to go back and reference the picture when it's done. So like, for instance, this color is more gold. The, um, the fuchsia is red. The pewter, that's green. I don't know why it came up as pewter, but either way, um, we're going to stitch out each color and we'll come back and check in with you at the end. Okay, so we're up to our last bit of stitching. The buttons are the same color as the holiday word and the bow tie his dapper little bow tie is the same as the eat cookie red words. So we're just going to stitch out his eyeballs next. And I did his eyeballs in a dark gray instead of a black because I thought it looked kind of prettier with the brown of the cookie. So we're going to go ahead and stitch out our last little bit. Okay, so we're all done. This is a tearaway stabilizer, which means I can just sort of grab it and yank it out of the hoop. 
one of the things that I tend to do when I'm doing towels, because I don't like the scratchy feel on the back, you don't worry too much about pulling out every little bit of the tearaway, especially since this was fusible. It's kind of on there a little bit. You know, it's not like stuck forever. It's just, we fused it just enough to hold it down into the hoop. So I will pull away the big chunks of um, tear away. And then since I don't like when I rub my hands on a towel like this, like if I'm actually drying my hands on it, I don't like the scratchy bits. We showed this product in the bunting video. This is the Dream Weave Ultra. And I told you I would show you another thing you could do with this. So in your kit, when you order the towels, I'm going to give you the stabilizer for in the hoop as well as a piece of this stuff so you can see how it works. I just place it over my design, okay, and iron it on. So make sure the bumpy side is against your towel. What this does, this stuff is really brilliant for like t-shirts or baby onesies where you want to cover the scratchy bits of the thread. Especially, especially like with a baby onesie where you want to make sure that the scratchy bits of the thread isn't touching baby skin. So now we've covered up all our stitching on the back. So that's going to lock those stitches in. It's going to make them even more secure. And it's soft now. There's no scratchy feel from the stabilizer or the thread. Okay, now on the other side, I'm just going to give this a little press to make sure everything's laying where I want it to lay. Whenever you do embroidery, you tend to have little jump stitches. So my favorite tool for getting rid of jump stitches is these curved snips. See how they curve up just a little bit? What that lets me do is put the pokey part right underneath the thread and cut it, but I don't risk cutting into my embroidery. So, Here's our finished design. How cute is he? So I hope that um, if you have an embroidery machine sitting around and you haven't decided to do anything with it yet, this is a really good opportunity to break that out and get to know your embroidery machine. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.